I'm Peter Revel from the University of Derby Corporate and I had the pleasure this morning of discussing with Pete Scales, who is also an academic at the University of Derby, our collective understanding of what is meant by work-based learning. Pete has a lot of experience in the lifelong learning sector and in higher education, teaching at postgraduate level, and is also the author of quite a popular book, Teaching in the Lifelong Learning Sector. Peter, good morning. Thank you Hi. for talking to Thanks me so. this morning. It's a pleasure. You've got a lot of experience of uh, teaching in both higher education and in FE. Yeah. Work-based learning is a term that's bandied around these days. Yeah. Uh, and there may well be quite a lot of different perspectives and understanding of it. Mm. I'd very much like to explore your understanding this morning. What would you define as work-based learning? Yeah, um, I think the most important word in that is, is learning, essentially. I mean, you could say, you know, the work-based bit is, is just an adjective, you know, to refer to learning um, in, in a particular place. Um, you know, I think one, one sort of uh, interpretation of work-based learning, um, if we're not careful, could just be seen as training. Mm. So, you know, training mm. for a particular process or task or training yeah. for a particular yeah. role. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, learning uh, implies something extra and that it's about um, change, it's about sort of becoming a different person. Yeah. So rather than just becoming someone who is um, an operative of a particular machine or in a particular role, you're someone who is able to kind of constantly reflect and change and adapt and improve. And I think if I was an employer, I'd want someone who could, you know, if I've trained someone for a, or had someone trained for a particular role, I would like them to be able to say, you know that thing I learned to do, Pete, actually, I think there's a better way, a more mm. efficient way, mm. and I've thought mm. it through. Yeah, yeah. And I think we should have a go. I mean, you, you, you've got experience in both tertiary, further education, and in higher education. Do you think there is a difference between people's perceptions of what is meant by work-based learning in tertiary and further education and how it's interpreted in higher education? Um, I'd, I think there is. I mean, I th certainly the, the, the difficulty is that, you know, we, can, we could have some kind of almost kind of educational apartheid, you know, where there's a danger of thinking work-based learning is something lesser and that it's not kind of proper yeah, university yeah, learning, yeah, yeah. Um, and that you know there is a danger that people can both perceive it as training, and then it can just merely become training. Um, I think in in the university, and you know, for example, here at the University of Derby, um, we see work-based learning, or a lot of people see work-based learning in a kind of wider context. I don't think it's as quite as constrained or narrow as it might be, say, for example, in an FE college, mm, mm. you know, where someone is doing um, an NVQ and they, they're learning a set of competences and someone comes along and assesses them yeah, and says, yeah. right, you've done that bit, you're competent to do that. Yeah. Um, so do you think there's a difference then between uh, someone who is uh, assessing, for example, a QCF NVQ yeah. um, and their role and that of a uh, teacher on a, uh, an online program in the first year of a university program who is following a work-based program is do they need similar skills um, yes I think they do I mean I think you know in the same way that we expect um, or we want students to become reflective learners I think you know whether you're working in a university or a work-based setting and you know, as a teacher yeah. you need to be yeah. reflective yeah. because if you're a good teacher you'll be thinking about um, is this working am I presenting this in a way that the students or the learners can understand do I need to adjust it mm. do I need to mm. you know rather I mean I think um, a poor teacher whether they're teaching in a university or in work is someone who says you know right I've got a PowerPoint I'll put it on I'll go through it I'll read what it says and then we've done it yeah, you know, yeah. you can get someone off the street to do that. Yeah, and how often do we see that taking place Too within work-based learning? That's right. Too often. I mean, it's interesting what you said there about developing those skills of reflection, of becoming an independent learner. Yeah. Um, so that the knowledge and understanding that you acquire from a learning program, mm. you're then able to apply within your your workplace. Yeah. 
transferring those skills uh, into someone who is a practitioner in the workplace, uh, would, you, would you say that that is a difficult skill set to acquire? The, the ability to apply, I'm sorry. I'm, well, to become a reflective learner, to become an independent learner. I think some people are more kind of naturally given to reflection and others, you know, whatever situation they're in, have mm. to kind of think mm. about it and mm. learn it. So, you know, some people will kind of, um, <clears throat> they will think about and evaluate their performance, you know, whether they're teaching or, you know, uh, trying to make a marriage work. And, uh, you know, they'll think about it and think, well, that didn't work. Perhaps I need to try something different. Yeah, yeah. So the, mm. the difficulty is to help people who aren't kind of naturally reflective to become reflective. Yeah, so you know, that's, that's an important tenant, you would argue, of, of being a practitioner in the work-based learning field, yeah. of trying to, to, to encourage the learner to acquire those, those skills in that way. So yes. they're continuously <coughs> reflecting on their practice, yes. whether it's as a baker or whether it's a senior manager within yeah. a large company. Yeah, I think, you know, because the interesting thing, you use the word apply, and I think, you know, if we think about, you know, Bloom's taxonomy, mm. uh, which are mm. hopefully people, you know, watching will be familiar with, but really application is kind of only halfway up. Yeah. So, you know, I would want someone, wherever they're learning, to go to the higher levels to be able to analyse what they're doing and yeah. to evaluate yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And also to kind of synthesise and make, yeah. you know, yeah. new ideas yeah. and things yeah. from what they've learned. The sort of people who are likely to come on, on this programme may well include uh, people who are, for the majority of their time, assessors of national vocational qualifications or the QCF yeah. equivalents. They're assessing competence against yes, national yeah. standards. Now, yeah. in an earlier conversation, um, we, 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 we sort of explored the fact that they are in an assessing mode, mm. but we, we mentioned that once they'd identified where the individual is competent and where perhaps at that point they're not so competent, they're yeah. not competent, yeah. shouldn't use the word not so competent, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. that the role of the assessor at that point may well change. Yeah. Um, so would you argue that they, they too need to acquire not only the skills of being a good teacher, but also those reflective those analytical skills um, that you, you alluded to of, of, say, a teacher in higher education? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing to think about, actually, is the title assessor. And one of the difficulties, and certainly it was the case in further education, that people were called assessors um, because they could be paid less money. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, there is a danger that we say, you know, these are kind of lesser people. Yeah. You know, they're not yeah. kind of up there with the kind of yeah. educational aristocracy mm -hmm. of teachers mm -hmm. and lecturers. Um, but I think, you know, it's important that we, um, well, it'd be good if we could pay assessors more, but it'd also be important for us to kind of treat them like, you know, thinking, rational people who not only can assess competence, yeah. but they can actually analyse and evaluate and they can, you know, think things through. They don't just, you know, check things against what it says on the competency list. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're on the same hymn sheet there. I mean, one of the... Uh, you mentioned PowerPoint. I was making a presentation a little while yeah. ago uh, using, I have to say, only one or two PowerPoint slides. Uh, That's all right then. I'll let you off with that. Yeah. <laughs> On one of them, I had um, uh, uh, an issue that when we're appointing an assessor, yeah. we appoint them because they are generally occupationally, technically competent. Yes. What we don't then necessarily do is ask the question, are they also competent as, as teachers, yep. as people who can um, encourage people to learn and acquire yep. the additional knowledge and understanding they, they, they need to become competent performers. Yeah. Um, very often, we ignore that side of it yes. within work-based learning, I, 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 think. Well, but, I think. I think we do in university as well. Sorry to interrupt your yeah. train of thought mm. there. Um, but I mean, if you know the university rightly wants experts, you know. So, for example, you know, um, people down at Britannia Mill are experts in music technology, or we've got people who are experts in engineering, um, or expert psychologists, um, which which is what the university needs. But I think um, 
them being experts is not sufficient. They need to be able to kind of um, teach and inspire and really kind of challenge and motivate mm. their students. Mm. Mm. And that doesn't come naturally to everybody. Uh, I think we have to appreciate, you know, whether they're an assessor or whether they're a professor, that almost rhymes, um, <laughs> that they have help in becoming good teachers. Yeah. Pete, it's been really, really interesting and, and very helpful both to me and I hope to the students who are going yeah. to listen to this conversation. Yeah. Uh, to get your, your, your view, your well, spin, if you yeah. like, on, on, on your understanding of work-based learning. No, thanks. It's been, it's been very enjoyable. It's given me some things to think about, actually. Good. So I'll thanks go away. very much. It's a pleasure. Cheers.